Okay, uh, this is Stan Freifeld here, and I think we'll start the uh, the, the presentation now. Um, questions that normally come up, uh, yes, it will be recorded. Um, in fact, I already hit the record button. I've been known to forget that from time to time. Let me uh, put up the title of the presentation. Here we go. Um, make sure you're in the right spot. Okay, um, well, I wanna thank everybody for coming. Um, like I said, I'm going to record. I don't have my wingman with me, um, so I might not be able to answer all the questions as they come in. I'll try and answer questions if there, uh, if there are many at the end. And also any questions that come in, uh, I will respond to privately. Uh, probably not tonight, but within a day or so. So if, if you do have a question, uh, feel free to send it, um, and it, it will get answered uh, either today or, uh, or at some later date, uh, meaning tomorrow. Okay, um, what I'm going to do tonight is give you some basic information, some um, well, basic information about probability, expectation, and how we could make some profits, and how we could avoid some trades that uh, that don't really make a lot of sense, that have negative uh, expectation, and will lead to probably poor results. Before I get into that, though, I have a few things I want to say. I've been um, some people call it my sermon. Uh, it's not real. I, I don't think of it that way, but I, I just want to give you the um, the, the good news and bad news, I, I guess I normally start with the bad news, and, and that is most people who trade options end up losing money. And um, the, this is a very competitive environment that we're in, and money only changes hands. We're, we're not creating anything by trading options. It's not like a, um, I don't know how good an analogy this will be, but it's not like a baker who takes some ingredients, puts them into a pot and stirs them up. Uh, and then bakes a cake and then sells the cake for more than the sum of the ingredients and his other expenses. It's not like that. When one person makes X dollars, the other, uh, another person is going to lose that same X dollars. Money is only changing hands or pockets from one to another. Uh, so there's no creation. Um, so in other words, the way that we're gonna to have to make money in this environment is to be a little bit more motivated, maybe work a little bit harder, and certainly to know a, a, a little bit, maybe even a lot more than the next guy, more than the competition, because that's how I look at this. This really is a competition. Okay, now maybe that's the bad news. The good news is that trading is kind of complicated. It's not rocket science. But on the other hand, it's not arithmetic either. And most traders don't take the effort to, to learn how to trade options. They think in terms of uh, maybe one dimension, things go up and things go down. So you buy when you think something is low, you sell when you think something is, is high. Uh, and not really taking into account the added dimensions that we have when we trade options of time and volatility, which are very important. Uh, there are traders who, who don't really know um, how to use volatility. They don't understand the Greeks. They're not comfortable with put call parity. And the, the analogy that I use here is that it would be like driving a car. If you're not familiar with those things, it would be like driving a car without your gauges. And none of us want to do that. Sometimes you could get from point A to point B, but lots of times you can't. And when everybody else on the road is, um, is driving safely and they know how fast they're going and they know if they need gas and things like that, and you don't, you're at a severe disadvantage. And my job, what I'm trying to do is to help uh, put people who come to these webinars and maybe who uh, those who uh, attend the, uh, the the classes that I that I give, uh, trying to give them the information that's necessary um, to compete in this environment. Okay, uh, enough of that. So let's uh, let's move on. Here, first, this is my contact information. My name is Stan Freifeld. 
This is my direct uh, office phone number, and I, I like talking to option traders, so uh, feel free to call. Lots of times I'm either trading or mentoring, and uh, I don't have, uh, and I don't pick up, but I'll, I'll always get back to people in a relatively short period of time. This is my email. It's stan at optionstrategist.com. And uh, if you want a copy of the presentation, uh, also there'll be a link, I think, to the, um, uh, to the recording. Uh, there, there's also some other information, some special deals that we're offering to people who are attending tonight. It's at optionsstrategist.com and then put forward slash July 17. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's move on. This is a, an outline of the presentation. Kind of, it's kind of loose. Uh, first, I'll, I'll tell you who I am and why uh, why it might make sense to listen to what I have to say uh, about options anyway. Um, I'll read a disclaimer that's kind of important. We, and then we'll talk about probability. We'll talk about expectation. And then um, I'll, I'll go through some trading examples. Um, I think the examples that I have are mostly examples of what not to, what, what not to do, how to eliminate trades. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take a look. And then, uh, again, I have uh, some contact information and some other information about what we do at Macmillan Analysis. Okay, so first, uh, just take a minute. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but uh, well, just so you know, I, I'm an ex uh, floor trader, market maker, and uh, I became an official of the American Stock Exchange. Um, before that, I was an actuary. Uh, I, I used the proceeds from selling the actuarial business to, uh, to obtain funds to get a seat uh, and set up a trading account. And that's, uh, I think that's really it. I, I've been off the floor since 9-11, 2001. Um, yeah, and that, that's really my history. I've been running a, a mentoring program with Larry McMillan um, for the last uh, 11 years. First, I, after I left the floor, I traded uh, off floor for a while. I, if you read this, you'll see I, uh, I worked for, as a risk manager for, uh, for a very large a specialist firm on, on the New York Stock Exchange, but um, I, I'm more comfortable doing my own trades um, and not worrying about somebody else's trade. So uh, I, that, that was a very short period. Uh, and I set up this mentoring program about 11 years ago uh, with, with Larry. Okay, so that's who I am. Uh, here's a, a disclaimer, um, and, and I'll go through it quickly. The, the presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. should not be construed as a solicitation to buy or sell options or other securities of any kind. Also, we're not advising or recommending the use of the strategies or techniques described herein. There are multiple risks inherent to options trading that may expose investors and traders to potentially rapid and substantial losses. You agree that Macmillan Analysis Corp and especially Stan Freifeld, I should add, right, is not liable for any trading losses or other consequential damages you may incur. And option trading isn't suitable for everyone. And I'm the first, I love options. And in fact, uh, I, I sometimes think I need more of a life. Uh, I have cars and, uh, and options, and, and that's really what I do. And um, so I, I love options, but they're not suitable for everyone. Uh, I talk to people sometimes who, I guess, don't have the basic mathematical tools. And I'm not saying they have to be extensive, but you, you need some basic mathematical tools um, if, if you want to compete successfully in this environment. At least that's my opinion. So uh, maybe not everybody agrees. Um, and there's a publication uh, that you could get from the Options Clearing Corp. Uh, it's called characteristics and risks of, of options. All right, so let's let's get into the real presentation. And first question: Why is probability important, Demon? Well, it helps you manage risk and make and make decisions about almost everything: the weather, gambling, trading, um, you name it. No matter what you're thinking in terms of probability, comes up. So I think this is going to be a, a useful webinar, uh, even if you're not trading options all that much, but just understanding how probability works. It gives you an insight that, uh, that people who don't understand probability just, uh, just don't have. All right, so what is, what is probability? Here's 
some basic, uh, the, well, the basic definition. I guess it's the chance that a given event will occur. Okay. So it's the ratio of the number of ways a given event can happen divided by the total number of possible outcomes. I call that the universe, the universe of outcomes. Um, and that's how we calculate the probability. So it's just a ratio. Um, and in, in this presentation, I'll represent it by the probability of the event or just PE, probability of event, okay? The probability of an event can range from zero to one. Um, so the probability, so if the uh, probability of, event, of an event is equal to a half, it means that the event is a, as likely to occur as to not occur a uh, 50-50 proposition, I'm sure you've heard that. And the sum of all the probabilities of, um, of all the events must equal one, okay? So when you hear people talking about probabilities greater than one, that's not really possible. You, you can't have uh, people say they're, um, the probability of that happening is, is 110%. I think they're using some poetic license there. Um, that's, that's not really possible. You can't have a probability greater than one. One means it's definitely going to happen 100% under the assumptions that, that you're talking about. And zero means it's not going to happen. It can't happen. Okay, here's a, uh, a simple example of flipping a coin. We're, we're all familiar with that. And my son helped put this together. Let's see if it works. Yeah, look at that. Okay, we flipped a coin and we got, uh, we got a heads. Okay, now obviously there's only two, two things that could come up when you flip a coin, heads or tails, um, each of which is equally likely. So we'd say the probability of heads is a half, the probability of tails is a half. All right, that's, can't get too much more basic than that. Okay, here's another example. Um, well, here, here's a die. A, a die is a cube with the numbers from one to six on it. And the probability, if we roll it, the probability of getting a one is one sixth. The probability of a two, one sixth. Probability of getting any uh, number on that die is one sixth. Okay. All right. Now here, here are some questions I'd like you to think about. Uh, we're going to go through them because understanding how this works is really very important. But think about these questions. Okay. So I'll, I'll just read them. Um, and well, and some of the answers might be surprising to some people. So number one, a woman has two children. What is the probability that she has at least one boy? And um, we're going to assume that the probability of a boy or a girl is 50%. Okay, I, I'm, <laughs> my training is as an actuary. I know that's not exactly correct, but it's you know, for uh, for this kind of a question, that's fine. Uh, we, we could have used uh, flipping a coin, which we could also say is uh, 50%, but uh, of a heads or a tails. Okay, that's number one. Number two, a woman has two children, and at least one is a boy. What is the probability she has a girl? Okay, and number three, which um, some people think is really... Uh, a trick question, or it should be the same as number two, is actually a little bit different. A woman has two children. The older one is a boy. What is the probability she has a girl? Okay. So just take a couple of seconds, think about that, and then we'll go through all three so we, we, we know how to attack this kind of a question. All right. All right. A woman has two children. What is the probability she has at least one boy? Well, the way we'd work on this kind of a problem is we'd say, well, um, the universe of, of probabilities or, or of possibilities is boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, and girl, girl. So you know, let me get my pen out here. So the... Um, yeah, we'll keep this handy. So the probability of a boy is equal to three, right? There's a boy here, there's a boy here, there's a boy here, and there are four possible outcomes. So the probability is three divided by four, or 75%. Okay. Number two, a woman has two children and at least one is a boy. 
what is the probability she has a girl? Now, in this one, the universe is a little bit different because even though there are still um, four possible ways that a woman could have two children, boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl, we've now eliminated the girl, girl. So we'll take that one out. Now there are three, one, two, three. That's where this comes from. And in two of them, um, in two of them, there's a girl. There's a girl over here, right? Girl and a girl over here. So the probability is two divided by three or 66 and two thirds or 66.7%. Now the third one, this one's a little bit more tricky perhaps. A woman has two children and the older one is a boy. What is the probability that she has a girl? Okay, well, see now what, what we're doing here is we're assigning an order. And so we have the older child and the younger child. And so, uh, again, we, we could have the, the four possibilities. That, that's our total universe. But we're saying the older one is a boy. So we're eliminating these guys, right? So now we only have two possibilities. That's the two. And we want to know the probability she has a girl, and there's only one. So one out of two or 50%. This, this problem kind of shows why order matters. Now, here's a, another example of, uh, of order and, and why it matters. And this might be more intuitive, I think, to people. And that is the probability a woman has a boy and a girl is 50%, right? Uh, we, we all agree on that. If, if we have uh, the four possibilities, well, this one, a boy and a girl, and this one over here, a boy and a girl. So it's two out of four. Okay. Oops. Uh, so it's 50%. But if we wanted to know the probability that the woman has a boy first and then a girl, that's going to be one half the probability of having a boy times uh, the probability of having a girl uh, as the second child, which is a half. And a half times a half is a quarter or 25%. They're very different. So order is very important. Okay, it's not, a, I, I don't know if it's an obvious thing. I, I've been doing this for so long that to me it's kind of second nature. But uh, after talking to a lot of people, I know for some it might not be. So, you know, just think about that. All right. Now, what is, uh, here I have something, it says Monte Carlo probability. Not all probabilities are as easy to calculate as, uh, as the ones I've just shown you. Flipping a coin, rolling a die. Um, boy, girl, think, things of that nature. So in situations where you can't uh, do an exact calculation, you could ask your computer to run some, uh, some trials and try and figure it out that way. So for example, now uh, I'm using the example of, um, of flipping a coin, heads, heads or tails, uh, to illustrate the point, but we could run a hundred trials, have the computer flip the coin a hundred times, and it might come up 40, heads might come up 47 times. So we would say the probability of heads is 47%, 0.47. And we know the exact probability is really 50%. All right. If we ran it more times, suppose we ran it 10,000 times instead of 100. Well, we might get 4,931, some nice made up numbers, in which case I'd say the probability is 49%. And if we ran it a million times, we might get 500,000 and change heads, in which case we'd say the probability is a little bit more than 50%. So notice a few things here. Every time we run it, we might get slightly different answers, but the greater the number of trials that we, uh, that we run, the closer to the exact probability we'll probably get. Okay. Now we'd never do it for something like heads or tails because we know what the answer is. We know it's 50%. But in situations where we don't know what the answer is, this might be a way to do it. Um, and it, you know, it, the, the, the reason that we know we're going to get close to 50 is by something called the, the law of large numbers. But uh, what we need to know for, for tonight is that the, the greater the number of trials, the closer to the exact probability we're probably going to come. Okay. So anyway, at, um, just so you know, we, we have a probability, um, a Monte Carlo probability at Macmillan, um, which 
looks something well this is what it looks like and it's a, it's very useful um, it lets you enter some information and it does calculations now why is this a little different or more special perhaps than some other calculators or the calculator that might be on your platform uh, the reason is because we could enter information in this particular case um, uh, I'm running a particular distribution, a log normal distribution, and what's that, 10,000 times? Yeah. Uh, with the current stock price of 83, and I want to know the probability of it getting, of the stock getting to 90 or going down to 75. It'll, it'll show each of those. Uh, and I have to enter the, the number of trading days. And if I hit this button here, it gives me a calendar to, to calculate that. I need to know what the volatility of the stock is. And the expected stock return, which is basically the uh, the risk-free interest rate. Okay. Now the outputs that we get are the calculated probabilities, um, which which show what would happen at at expiration or at the end of 25 days in this case. So uh, it would be 26.1 percent that it closes above the upside, which would be 90 or uh, 24.5% below the downside, um, or closes below b beyond uh, either limit, it would be the um, the sum of the two, or 50.6%. But what this calculator does that a lot of other calculators doesn't do, and the reason I'm showing it to you is it also has an ever exceeds. So the the 45.8%, 45 45.855. And I don't know if we need that many decimal points, to be honest with you, because if I ran it again, the next time it might be uh, 46.2 or 40, you know, 45.1. It's going to be something a little bit different than this. But anyway, this is the probability that it ever exceeds uh, 90, the stock which is 83, the probability it ever exceeds 90, and this is ever exceeding the downside, so ever or being below the downside, uh, being less than 75. And then over here, the uh, the bottom line, the uh, 80. Well, first I'll show you this. Ever exceeding both limits, this would be 3.7 percent that it would at some point between now and the 25 trading days that it would be above 90 and also below 75. Obviously not at the same time. I guess that's clear. But um, And the probability is 82.5% that it will during that time exceed either limit. In other words, be above 90 or below 75. So it's a useful kind of calculator. There are others. Uh, like this um, available. But this is the kind of information that you might want to get when you're trading uh, to give you some kind of an indication. Now, of course, the, uh, the the key here is really the volatility variable and, and what to use for that. But uh, we're, we're not going to get into those kinds of details uh, tonight. All right. So here's a, uh, a trading perspective, kind of, a, I'll put it in the form of a question. If the probability of winning a trade is greater than 50%, does that mean necessarily that you want to do the trade? Well, the answer is not necessarily. Um, suppose the probability of winning is 60%, 0.6, and if you win, you make $100. And the probability of losing is 40%, and if you lose, you're going to lose $200. Well, let's say we did the trade 10 times, right? So we would expect to win um, six times. 10 times 0.6 or 6 times, and we would expect to lose four times. So when we put this together, we're going to see that uh, we would expect to lose a total of $200 because we're going to win 600, but we're going to lose 800, right? We're going to win uh, $100 six times. We're going to lose $200 four times for a net loss of $200. So but but the interesting thing to note, and, and this is um, this is kind of interesting, I think, that if we did the trade just one time, you would expect to win the trade. OK, so it's saying that if we just were doing this one time, we'd expect to win that trade, 60 percent probability of, of winning. But if we did it lots of times, this would probably be a, a, a losing strategy. OK, so let, let's see where we're going with this. All right. Well, what we um, 
what we're thinking in terms of really is mathematical expectation or expected value. And what that is, that's a very important number. It's the sum of all the wins and losses multiplied by their respective probability of occurring. So we'll start out with the simple example, the coin flipping example. Heads I win, tails you win. I'm so used to saying heads I win, tails you lose. But heads I win, tails you win. Let's bet a dollar. So um, the expected value is the probability of heads times one plus the probability of the tails times minus one. And that's equal to zero. So this would be a fair bet. Okay, there's no edge in it for you. But on the other hand, um, you, you shouldn't expect to, to lose any money if you did it over a period of time. And you might want to take this bet if you just feel lucky and you think that when you flip, you're going to get a heads. Um, or, or you might bet on tails. But, uh, but I, I think you get the idea. All right, so very simple example. What about rolling a die? All right, so here's a, a game that I made up. I roll a die and win the number of dollars that show up unless I get a five in which case I have to pay $18. So if I get a one to four or a six, I win. But if I get a five, I lose. I lose big time, I, I lose $18. So what is my expected value for this kind, of a, uh, th this kind of a game, this kind of a strategy? Well, the probability of getting a one times $1, probability of getting a two times $2, et cetera, all the way up to the probability of six times uh, $6, which is what you'd win. But if I get a five, the probability of getting a five times minus 18. Now we know the probability, we saw earlier, the probability of each of these uh, rolls is just one sixth. So if I put one sixth in here and multiply these all out, I'm gonna get negative 33 cents. So this would not be a very good, uh, a very good bet for me. Uh, it, it would probably be a good bet for the other side but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a few minutes, okay? All right, now let's think about roulette. I, I use the, the roulette example a lot because um, I'm pretty familiar with it. Uh, and it, well, it, it, it's a good example. And plus, uh, I, I think uh, if you're familiar with roulette, you'll, you'll understand that a lot of uh, mighty big casinos were built on the basis of, of how roulette works. So let me explain the uh, the game for, for those who might not be familiar with it. Uh, in the U.S., at least, there's numbers 1 to 36 and a 0 and double 0. I say in the U.S. because some places only have a 0. But in the U.S., they, there's typically both. So that's a total of 38 numbers. And you could bet on a, a particular number, 1 to 36 or, or either of the zeros, and uh, you're going to win 35 to, to 1. Okay? Um, now, if you look at the table up here, you'll see 18 of the numbers are red and 18 are black, and the zero and double zero are green. And if you bet on red or black, the winning payoff is one to one. So, uh, it, you know, it's pretty close to an even bet. It's not, and we'll, we'll see in a minute. There are other bets that are also available, but the, the concept is going to be the same as, as, as what I show you. Okay. So the, uh, the the simple the simplest bet is just to bet on a number. You, know, you like number 17 or uh, 32, you bet on that number. So let's calculate the mathematical expectation. Well, it's the probability of winning times the payoff plus the probability of losing times the payoff. So from the player's perspective, that's us, right? We're the player, unless you own a casino. Um, the probability of winning is 1 over 38. And the payoff, I said, was $35. So you're going to get 35 or 35 units if we're talking in terms of units. But we could say dollars. That's why I don't have dollar signs all over the place. Um, the probability of losing, most of the time your number won't come up. 37 out of 38 times, probably your number won't come up. You're going to lose the dollar that you put out. So if we multiply these numbers together, we see there's a, a negative expectation of 5%. Five and a quarter percent is what people would say. Um, to the player. Now, that means the casino, the other side of that bet, um, has a positive expectation. And the way we calculate it for the casino is 
37 out of 38 times, they're going to keep that dollar. But every once in a while, one out of 38 times, they're going to lose 35. We put this all together, and what do we get? A positive expectation of 5.26%. Okay, so the, the other side of the player is the casino and vice versa. All right, but let's, let's keep going with this. Now, what if, um, if instead of betting on a number, we said, all right, let's just bet red or black, all right? Um, so again, we, we could go through and calculate the mathematical expectation. From the player's perspective, it's 18 over 38, half the numbers without regard to the two greens. Um, there are 36 numbers that are, not, um, that are not green, that are either red or black. So uh, half of those are red, half are black. So 18 over 38 times uh, $1 that you'd win. But on the other hand, you're going to lose because you have those two green numbers, the zero and double zero. So you're going to lose more than half half the time. You're going to lose 20 over 38 times. You'll lose your dollar. So you're going to lose um, five five percent. The the same 5.26 percent, the same amount as uh, as if you were betting on a number. It's kind of interesting. And again, we could calculate the casino's perspective on it and the casino would be making that 5%. Okay, well, let's keep going. So some people think that the reason the casino wins is because it's really selling the bet and the player is losing because the player is buying the bet. And I, I get into this kind of a conversation uh, a lot. In fact, I, I've done a webinar on, on this uh, exactly this issue of are we better off buy, when we're trading options, are we better off buying or selling uh, options? And um, well, without going into that webinar now, but I'll, I'll just tell you the, the answer is it depends. There are times when it's right to be a buyer, times when it's right to be a seller. Uh, but one side doesn't have an inherent advantage over the other. But this is one of the reasons that people point out to me uh, as to why it's better to be a seller, because the casino is selling the bet, you're buying the bet, you're putting out your dollar, and uh, and the casinos obviously win. But that's not why. The actual payoff is 35 uh, to 1, So and we know the player's expectation is negative 5%. But if, if the payoff amounts were different, suppose the payoff was... 37 to 1 instead of 35 to 1, then it would be a totally fair game. And all those big casinos, I guess there, there, there'd still be a lot of sand uh, in, in Las Vegas uh, instead of these huge and very expensive casinos. And you could see this is how we'd calculate it, right? If it was 37 to 1 instead of 35 to 1. And the expectation would be zero, it would be a fair game. And if the payoff, let's say the payoff was 38 to 1. Um, and I, the, this is laugh out loud or lots of luck, I guess, uh, the, you know, from a gambling perspective, right? Uh, that's never going to happen. But if it was 38 to 1, then the player's expectation would be calculated this way. And lo and behold, we'd have a positive expectation of 2.63%. But, and, and in that case, the player would have, the, um, the, uh, the buyer, the player who's the buyer, would have the advantage. So it's not because who's buying and who's selling that one side has an advantage over the other. It's the mathematical expectation that gives the advantage to the uh, to the house. Okay, and I, I believe it's the same when we're trading options. Okay. Um, all right. So, well, this this is what what I was just saying. The player is playing a game that's stacked against him, but not because he's the buyer. It's because of the negative expectation. To make it fair, the the the, uh, the payoff has to be 37 to one. Or another way that we could look at it is we could reduce what the player is paying for the um, for for the bet. If instead of paying a dollar, if he paid 95 cents, I calculated a little more exactly here but call this 95 cents, then again, and you could do the calculations, then again, it would come out to, uh, to a fair game. Okay, now just a, a note, um, 
because I, I hear people telling me all these systems that will beat roulette. There's no betting system that could overcome the negative expectation in the long run. In fact, uh, just a, a quick, um, interesting story, uh, quick story. Uh, I was doing teaching options um, in a brick and mortar setting. And a student there told me he had a, a system. We, we'd gone through some roulette examples. And he had a system that would, would win. And I asked him to show me the, uh, the, the system so I could show it to the class and, and see if we could figure it out. And he said, I, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I paid a lot of money for this system. And one of the, uh, the restrictions is I'm not allowed to, set, to show it to anybody. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Now, by the way, just to, to make it clear, um, I'm not saying that roulette can't be won. First, it could just be lucky. But there are all kinds of very um, innovative people and very imaginative people who've tried lots and lots of different things, um, looking for tables that might not be perfectly fair or uh, seeing if they could determine from where the dealer lets the ball go, uh, if they could determine what quadrant even on the uh, on the wheel the ball will fall into there's a very good um, very interesting book uh, it's kind of, it's an autobiography of uh, edward thorpe it's called a man for all markets he wrote uh, one of the first gambling books on uh, on blackjack called beat the dealer but he also wrote beat the market and um he had um, a very well-known, I can't think of the name, oh, Princeton, uh, Princeton Holdings or some, Princeton something um, hedge fund that, that did very, very well um, with um, warrants. Basically, it was warrants, but warrants are very similar to, uh, to options. Anyway, uh, a man for all markets. I, you know, I, I recommend it if, if you want something to read. All right. Here's a, another perspective on what it's like <clears throat> to, um, again, we're, we're still playing roulette. This is the win-loss cycle of the, uh, of the player. Most of the time, they're going to lose. They put a dollar down, and we, we saw most of the time they're, they're not going to win. So it's going to be lose, 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 lose. And then every once in a while, we're going to have this big win, $35 comes in. And then we lose, lose, lose. We keep losing. And every once in a while, again, we're going to have the big win. The life cycle of the casino, the, the, uh, the entity that's selling the bet, is a little bit different. Most of the time, they're going to win. They've taken a dollar, taken a dollar, taken a dollar. Win, 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 win. And then every once in a while, they're going to have a big loss. And when I say big loss, it's the $35 they have to pay out. Um, but overall, they're, they're going to win. And we said uh, they're going to win because the expectation is on their side. Okay? All right. Let's keep going. So how do we do an expected value calculation? Um, I have a trade here. The, the trade is we're, we're going to buy one. And uh, I'm always using XYZ. It's my favorite company. XYZ, a March 100, 110 call bull spread. Uh, and that's where we're, we're buying the March 100 call. We're selling the March 110 for $400. Okay. So um, let's say we're given this information or we've determined it somehow. Let's see if this trade would, would make sense for us. So the probability that um, at expiration, the stock XYZ will be less than 100 is 35%. And we, we have these various prices. At 102, the probability is 12%, 104, 10%, et cetera. The sum of the probabilities we see adds up to 100, 100% uh, or 1, right? And so... Uh, what we have to do is figure out what the profit or loss would be at each point. So under 35, uh, I'm sorry, under 100, we'd lose the full $400 that we paid. So our loss would be 400. And we calculate the expected profit. So 35% times negative 400 is equal to this. That's, that's our calculation. And then 12% or 0.12 times negative 200 is equal to negative 24, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then we said the, the, the probability that the stock ends up over 110, we're saying is 26%. Uh, in, in that case, 
the value of this would be um, $1,000. We paid 400 for it. So we'd be making 600. That would be our gain, right? And so 0.26 times 600 is, um, is, is 156. We add these all up. And this is what we're saying. So this would have a positive expectation of $42. Now, of course, in, in the real world, we might, uh, well, we probably would want to take out uh, expenses as well, right? Uh, because they're, they're real. And if our expenses were, well, uh, to, to buy and sell this, uh, well, we're only doing it one time. I, I don't know how much. I guess everybody has different um, different prices, but let's say $11, um, we'd have to take out $11. If we have to close the trade at expiration, you know, that would be maybe another $11. So we, we'd have to see if it makes sense for us to put a trade like this on or not. Hopefully you have better uh, better rates than this, but um, I was using 10 plus uh, $10, $10 ticket chart, charge and uh, $1 um, per contract or 50 cents, I guess, per contract. All right. So that's how we do the calculation. Now, if the probabilities are accurate, the trade has an expected value of 42. And again, you know, minus commissions, et cetera. But here, here's something interesting to note. 42 isn't even a possible outcome of the trade. If you take a look, the possible outcomes, we're, we're just assuming that the stock's going to end up at one of these values. The profit or loss are these numbers. It could be exactly minus 400, exactly minus 200, 0, 2, 4, 600. But it can't be, it can't be $42. And that's an interesting perspective from uh, regarding uh, mathematical expectation. And look at the last note on here. As, as an aside, the expected outcome when you roll a die is 3.5. Well, uh, and you might want to just, um, you know, convince yourself that it is. But you can't roll. You, you can't get a 3.5. You can only get a 1 to, you can only get an integer from 1 to 6. You can't get a 3.5. So um, it's kind of interesting to note that the expected value doesn't need to be one of the possible outcomes um, of the strategy that you're using or the event if it's uh, something other than a trade. Okay, now here I have a couple of trading examples. I've kind of changed them around a, a little bit um, to, to make the numbers more, uh, to make them more obvious, but this is very close to, to, to what the recommendation was. I saw this in uh, one of the newsletters that I was looking at. So with XYZ, it was about the 74. It said sell the OC 6065 put vertical for 28 cents 10 times. That, that was the recommendation. Now, um, when, when we're selling the, the put vertical, that, that's actually a bull spread that we're putting on for a credit, right? We're, uh, we're, we're buying we're buying this guy the uh, October 60 put and we're selling the 65. Uh, 65 the 65 put is more expensive than the 60, right? Okay. The the maximum gain on on this vertical would be what we sell it for 280 dollars, 28 cents, which is 28 dollars for one contract 10 times. The maximum loss, however, is is actually pretty large. Um, it would be 4,720, which is the difference between the strikes, $5. So the, the spread could be worth um, uh, $5,000 that we might have to buy it back for. We're collecting the 280 up front, and then we might have to buy it back for 5,000 for a net loss, uh, a maximum loss of 4720. Now, of course, uh, the stock is 74, and the, the high strike is 65. That's a long way to go, nine points. Uh, you know, it's more than uh, more than 10% down that it's got to go. And to get to the maximum loss, it's really got to got, got to move to uh, to 60 or less, 14, 14 over 74. That's a that's a huge percentage. The break even you could calculate. The break even would be 64.72. This was all information that was given in this trade recommendation. Okay. Now the uh, they also told you the probability that the stock would be less than 60 was six percent, 
and the probability would be less than 65. They don't tell you where they got these numbers from, and um, I'm not going to get into it today, but maybe they were looking at deltas or um, something, uh, or maybe they had some kind of a probability calculator. I, I don't know. But this is what they told us. And the probability that the stock would be less than 65 at expiration was 13%. Okay, so let's, let's analyze what it's saying. Okay, so the probability that it's less than 60 is 6%. The probability it's between 60 and 65 would be 7%, right? Because we know the probability that, it, that it's less than 65 was 13. Probability it's less than 60 was 6. So this has to be 7%. But what that also is telling me is the probability that it would be greater than 65 is 87%. And that's really what they were trying to show you, that the, the probability of this stock falling you know, to, to 65, which would be break even, no, I'm sorry, which would be the uh, gain of, um, at 65, the gain of what was it, 200, 280, yeah, 280. Um, you know, saying that that's not going to happen very often. 87% of the time, the stock's going to be above 65. But let's let's do some calculations. So here's the um, uh, here here's the amount of gain or loss. Less than 60, we'd lose the full amount. This was uh, an average amount that I calculated myself uh, of the stock falling between 60 and 65. Maybe it's exactly at uh, at halfway, 6250. I, I don't remember how I calculated the number, but um, I'm sure we could figure it out. And this is uh, above 65, we gain, we, we just get to keep our credit, the $280. So um, if we multiply the, the probability times the gain or loss, 0 0.06 times negative 4,700, 0.07 times negative 2,200, and 0.87 times positive 280, we get these numbers in, uh, over here in this row, right? And then, but then when we add them up, we get a negative expectation of $195. Now, again, most of the time this trade is going to win. And it's very enticing because if a newsletter shows you a trade like this and they put it on a couple of times and they win both times, they, you know, they, they could end up with a very nice win rate. But one, one large loss, you know, one time the, the stock just uh, falls out of bed. Um, and it wipes out 17 prior wins. So my advice, you know, you, you don't want to take trades that have a, a, a negative expectation like this. All right. Here's another one. Um, and, and this was kind of interesting. Um, and there was a, a newsletter. Uh, it was a different newsletter than the one I just um, mentioned. But they were recommending selling weekly puts. Uh, I'm still using the same XYZ, uh, different prices, but uh, selling XYZ puts with about a 99% probability of winning. Okay. Now, with XYZ at 400, you could sell the 345. That's $55 away, right? Uh, for about $11. The margin would be 3,500, and if there were no losses, let, let's just figure this out. In, in one year, if there were no losses, if you did it 52 times, you'd make $11 uh, each time, and you have 30 over 3,500, which is the the margin amount. You you know you'd make 16.3 percent. That's a that's a pretty nice number, right? All right. Now let's. Uh, I I had I looked into it at the time. Um, to lose on the trade, this stock would have to decline 13.75%, right? And that hadn't happened uh, in 2016, in 15, in 14. It did happen once in 2013, though. Okay, so the biggest, the, the, the drop in 13 was actually about 25%. That, that's large. Um, and so today we're, we're starting out with a $400 stock. Let's say the same thing happened. That would put the stock at 300, right? 25% down or a loss of 44.89, right? Um, it would be $4,500 that we'd have to buy this put back for that we sold for only $11. So 
since it happened one time in four years, and, and we're looking at this on a, a weekly basis, I'm saying there's 52 weeks in a year, so uh, in four years we have 52 times four, or 208 uh, times uh, our universe is 208 times, and one time, um, and one time did we meet this criteria of falling 25%. So if we calculate, and these are very rough numbers, obviously, just because it happened doesn't, uh, and uh, because I'm assigning it a probability of 1 uh, over 208, doesn't mean that that's necessarily the correct number. It might be, the probability might be higher, um, and it, it just didn't happen over the last um, few years. Or it could be much lower, and we, we just had a, you know, a, a rough, uh, a rough, period where the, the stock fell 25%. Anyway, but using those numbers, we calculate the expected value as 207 uh, over 208. That's how, how many times we're going to win. We're going to win that $11. But the one time that we're going to lose, we're going to lose 44.89. And it's only going to happen once in four years. But overall, again, we have a net loss of... Um, or an expected value of, of negative ten dollars, negative ten, and we don't want to take that, uh, that that kind of a risk of putting on trades that have a negative expected value. We want trades that have a positive expected value, even though the odds on winning any particular week are are very great. Uh, you know, two hundred and seven out of two hundred and eight times. So you know, more than that's greater than ninety nine percent. So we have to be careful about how we look at these things. Again, you know, like we said uh, before, uh, most times it's going to win. But over any period of time, uh, you, you have to be aware that it, it, it might turn into a, um, a very large losing trade. And here's something else. Uh, I'll just throw this in, something else to think about. Those numbers that, that we just saw had volatility at uh, 45. Suppose that in three days, I just picked three days, the, the stock drops to 370. And we're still pretty far from the strike. Remember, we're, we're talking about the, uh, the, four, the 345 puts. So we still have a ways to go before, um, before expiration for us to be in trouble. But when, when this happened, volatility spikes to 70. The margin is now 5,200. Now the puts are three hundred and nineteen dollars. What do you do at that point? Do you just take your loss, um, and which would be, you know, wouldn't be that great. Um, you, you took in eleven dollars. You, you'd have to buy it back for for three nineteen. That's you know, significant, but not catastrophic. Or do you just hope that it's not going to continue to drop? It puts you in a very awkward situation. Um, and, uh, of almost having to guess. Now, people who know me know know what I would do. I, I would say take the trade off. But then again, I never would have had this kind of a trade on to begin with. And just to, to, to make this more clear, think about it. If we're taking in $11, to make this kind of trade worthwhile on a weekly basis, how many times do you want to do it? 10? You want to make $110 a week? All right. 20, 50? Um, the margin requirement and the amount that you could lose if it does go south can get to be some uh, could get to be a very large number. Okay. All right. Um, so how important is the probability of winning a trade in a vacuum without other information? It's kind of close to to meaningless. Okay. Just the probability of of winning a trade. Um, when I when I taught brick and mortar, I'd bring in an advertisement uh, of somebody claiming that he won 90 or 95 percent of his trades. I'd ask the class, well, what do you think about this? And some people would say, can't be. He's, he's not telling the truth. And I'd say, no, I, I'm sure that what he's saying is uh, is actually true. But here's the deal. When there's a, uh, a 95 percent probability of winning. Just assume that there is a bomb waiting to go off in the other 5%. Okay, so most of the time you'll win, but 
you really could uh, could could get yourself into a lot of trouble in that kind of a situation. Um, now, the the win rate is you know it, it is kind of important, but on the other hand, you could have a very high win rate and a, a negative expectation, and you could have a low win rate. In other words, you could lose more trades than you could than than you win. Um, but overall, it could have a high expectation. So you need to, to really look into it and make a determination as to what makes sense. Um, to, to help with that, we, we, have, um, we, we have our expected return calculator. Again, um, it, it's something you, you know, that you might have on your, uh, on your platform. Lots of platforms have things similar to this. Uh, but I just wanted to show you what something like this would look at. Here I, I put on a butterfly spread, 25 lot uh, butterfly spread, 100, 120, 140. And let's see what, what happens. And this is the, the kind of information that you get from this uh, calculator. It, it, it shows the, uh, the expected dollar return at various uh, times to expiration that were I didn't point it out, but that were input over here, evaluation dates. Um, um, but what's real, and, and it shows it by dollar amount and by uh, by percent. But what's neat is the the visual, uh, and so you could see how a butterfly matures over uh, a period of time. And this, I, I don't remember even if this was a real trade or not. So don't uh, don't get excited about the expected profit, but it shows an expected profit. Now, of course. Um, the the actual profit could be significantly more than that if the stock happens to go out right at the um, at, at the best possible place for you. And what what this shows is that these different uh, time periods, what um, what, what the gain or loss would be. Uh, well, the, these are all gains. Um, with the stock at, and you, you could move it, or you could move the uh, the mouse around and look at different uh, price points to, to see how this particular position would do. So uh, a useful tool, but again, most or, or at least a lot of the better platforms have something like this, very similar to it. All right. So here's a thought question: Is it enough to have a win probability greater than 50% to do the trade. Now, I think we already beat this one to death, right? We know the answer to this is no. Uh, that's, that's not enough. But let's, let's make it more interesting. What about this? Is it enough to have both a probability greater than 50% and a positive um, expected value to do a trade? In other words, what I'm asking is, if you see a trade where there's a uh, a probability that you're going to win of more than 50%, and it has a positive expected value, and let's say after commissions, whatever. Um, are you then, do, does it then always make sense to do the trade? Now think in your minds what you're, if I was asking you this question, you could tell me right now, think about what you would say. Because I'm going to tell you what I think here. Well, somebody, I, you know, I'm not reading all the uh, the questions or the comments, but somebody just hit hit, hit it right on. Uh, John just hit it hit the nail right on the head. Uh, and here's um, here here's the answer. So I'm going to give you an example. There's a, a 51 probability, 51 percent probability that you're going to gain two million dollars, and a 49 percent probability that you're going to lose 1.5 million. So obviously, uh, the, the probability of winning is favorable, 51%. We could even make it more, but 51%, so it's greater than 50%. And the, prob the expectation we could see is obviously going to be greater. It's going to be positive, right? 0.51 times 2 million minus 0.49 times 1.5 million. That's a positive number. So still, even though um, we have a... a Probability of winning, which is good, it's favorable to us, uh, and the expected value is positive. 
most rational traders, and of course, there, there might be people out there with, uh, with, with tons and tons of money who, who would say, you know, what the heck, I'll, I'll take the trade. But most rational traders would not do this kind of a trade. And that's because even though we're trading options, we're really risk adverse, or at least I am. And I, I, I think that makes a lot of sense to be risk adverse. Um, yeah, so we, we, we want to be careful with, with this kind of thing. So it so risk is another part of the equation that we really have to take into account. And um, at, at some point, I'll, I'll do a webinar on that as well. And uh, I'll give you my perspective on it at least. Um, so, um, but, but this I, I find to be very interesting. So we, we need more than just um, a, a high percentage of winning and a positive expectation. All right, so here's the bottom line. Um, it, it's nine o'clock, a few more things I just wanna tell you. And uh, for a trader to be successful in the long run, trades must have a positive expected value. At least I, I would never put on a trade. I, I always check it. Uh, I, I wanna have a positive expected value. I also like having a reasonable probability of winning. Now, there are situations where you could lose 20% of the time and win 80% of the time. But because of the positive expectation, if you did it enough times, that, would, uh, that trade would work. But I think psychologically, that's not where I want to be. I want to I want to have more winning trades than losing trades. So I kind of phrased it this way. I want to have a reasonable probability of winning. I'm not saying it necessarily, it even has to be greater than 50. If I had a trade where I won, let's say 45% of the time and I lost 55, but when I, when I win, I win that much more than when I lose, I, I'd certainly be looking at that kind of a trade. But here's the, you know, the, the real bottom line. Even if a trade looks good, the amount of capital risk shouldn't exceed some percentage of, of, of the trading capital that you have. And I, I have lots of different ways of, um, of making that determination. And again, uh, at, at some point, I'll, I'll do a webinar on that and at least give you what my, uh, my criteria happens to be. Um, not saying it's it's the best uh, criteria out there, but it, it 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 keeps you out of trouble, and that's really what we want to do. So that's now I, I want to tell you a little about Macmillan, and um, um, I, I think most of you probably know who we are anyway. But we provide lots of products and services: trade advisories, money management, educational material, software products. What what I most of what I do is uh, consulting. I, I do consulting to institutions, hedge funds, uh, and individuals who have very specific kinds of issues that they want to discuss. Um, and I I run the one-on-one -on -one mentoring program. I, I started that 11 years ago, and that's uh, that's really what I enjoy doing the most. Um, just building a foundation and, and teaching people about uh, the theory and the practice of, of trading options. So uh, here's, uh, you, you can always visit our website or call me, uh, call me directly. Um, you'll probably get an email from our office as well uh, about that. Oh, some, yeah, um, this is something, it's relatively new. It's our tuition reimbursement uh, program or plan. Um, something I, I just started recently, I had it years ago and then uh, for a number of reasons, uh, companies got merged, uh, brokerages got merged, and it kind of fell apart. But I've put it together again. And here, here's how this works. Students who go through our mentoring program uh, and use one of our recommended brokers will we'll get either a discounted commission right up front or rebated commissions. One, one company does a, a rebate, another uh, just discounts the commissions until they make up the cost of the mentoring. So this is really great. You know, it, it's a win for the broker. It's a, really a win-win-win. It's a win for the brokers because they get trained customers who want to trade options. It's a win for us because uh, hopefully we'll get more students because it's not going to cost the students anything to to take the mentoring. Um, and by the way, we don't get anything at all from the broker. 
all the, all, all we get is the ability to offer this to, to our students. There, there's no either hard dollars back or soft dollars. I don't want you to think we're, we're making money by recommending a particular broker to you. And it's a win for the student because they get the, uh, the free mentoring. And if you, you know, if you don't trade a lot, uh, you might not get all of the, um, the tuition back. But if you trade enough, it, it would be like getting the mentoring for free. So you might want to, uh, to think about the mentoring program. Um, what else? We, we have some discounted specials for attendees. Uh, if you go to optionsstrategist.com forward slash July 17. I did put the um, expected return calculator and the probability calculator on, uh, on the special list. It's normal. They're normally not. Um, but I, because we're talking about that topic, I, I added those. They're, they're 50% off our, uh, our regular price. Uh, what else? Uh, if you have questions about the mentoring, like a, you'll probably get an email. I'm sure you'll get an email, but you could also uh, go to our site or call me. Uh, oh, and here are the answers to the brain teasers. Um, the man in the portrait is his son. Number two is true, and Harry is the best trader. Um, and number three is 22 times. Uh, if uh, For people who didn't come at the very beginning or early and don't know what I'm talking about, you, you know, if you get a copy of the uh, slides or, um, or the recording, you, you'll know. Um, and we also had a little contest. If, uh, for those who, who won, I'll, I'll let you know uh, by email. Uh, and we'll uh, start or extend your subscription to uh, the options strategist. Okay, and okay, and here's my contact information. I'll take a quick look, see if there are any um, any questions I, I could answer right now. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, it, it was Princeton Newport Partners. Yeah, I <laughs> I couldn't think of the name. I, I should have known that. I, I knew all about that company. I, actually, my son went to Princeton, and he used to uh, talk about it. Uh, from there all the time. Uh, is this price slicing for risk profile ana analysis? I'm not exactly sure what, what that question means, but if you flesh it out a little bit, I'd be happy to, uh, to respond privately. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and the what 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 um, someone named John said is that you could, uh, and it was right on target. You could win fifty cents but lose five million, and if you you could work out a scenario where uh, the the probabilities are are positive for you, um, and the expectation is positive, but uh, but it would still be a losing trade. Yes, risk. Okay. Um, Somebody wants to see the promo page again. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Oh, <laughs> happy to put that back up. It, it's really, yeah, it, it's, um, you know, it's really not even a, a promo page. Just go to July, optionstrategist.com forward slash July 17. Um, <laughs> okay, there, there's a question about what my favorite strategy is, I, I think. Um, you know, that, that's not something that I, I really wanted to, to talk about tonight, but I, you know, right now I'll, I'll tell you, I am doing a lot of um, long-term low volatility straddles. Volatility right now is so low on so many uh, equities that I'm putting on a lot that go out through December or uh, January um, of next year, January of, um, of 18. Uh, some, you know, February, uh, some around that time. Uh, no guarantees, uh, of course, and I, I won't mention any names, but that's that's the kind of strategy that I'm doing a lot of now. I also, uh, you know, I tend to like a lot of basic strategies, butterflies and uh, calendar spreads as well. All right. Uh, one of, yeah. Can, can. Yeah. Somebody asked. Okay. This this was a, uh, an interesting question. Can you expand or expound upon using delta for assuming the percentage chance of a positive outcome? Yeah. Um, see, mathematically, this doesn't hold up exactly. It's not a, an exact calculation. But some think of delta as the probability of the stock finishing in the money. So. Uh, you have a, a stock with an 85 delta. 
they would say that means the probability that the stock will be above the strike is 85%. And um, for those who use think or swim, you actually could have the delta and the more exact calculation in the column right next to it. And you could see that sometimes, yes, they're very close and other times they're not very close. So since it's so easy now to, to do an exact or a more exact calculation, of course, it's based on a model. Um, I would suggest that. The only time that I would use uh, like that uh, a delta of 85 is meaning 85% probability is uh, at a cocktail party if you're talking to somebody in very general terms. Of course, maybe that's why I don't get invited to too many cocktail parties anymore, but, but that's a whole nother story. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, and, and um, Weg, uh, you know, and I only mention first names when I mention people here, but Weg, that's a very good point. And Weg is saying if I look back more than four years, the probabilities um, that we calculated, the, the one over 208, would, would have been very different. And uh, and, and that's, that's certainly correct. All right, I'm going to close it down now, but any questions that are here that I'll, I, I'll see later on, uh, I will respond to. So, um, so if you didn't get it answered tonight, like I said, uh, uh, hopefully by tomorrow, I will respond. Okay, thank you all so much for coming. I, I appreciate it. Uh, and I, I hope you learned um, something about probability, expectation, and, uh, and profits. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.